Hey everyone, it's Ashley of Ann Cosplay. Um, it's been a minute. If you follow me on any of my other social media channels, you'll know I'm absolutely obsessed with wrestling right now. I've already made quite a few wrestling cosplays, but today I'm going to talk about one in particular, and that is my Cody Rhodes cosplay. I've gotten so many questions about how I made my Cody cosplay, and like, it's super flattering. And I've also had a lot of people ask if I can make them one too, but to be honest, I don't think I ever want to make this again. So I figured I'd talk about how I made it, show some of the materials I used, what I did. Unfortunately, I got rid of like all my progress videos. I don't know why I thought I would never use them again. And then this came up, but I still have a ton of photos and everything. I have some of the materials and I'm gonna have links below to everything that I used for this. I like raised that up way too high and this is like scary. I feel like I'm like hugging a person. <laughs> Like most of my cosplays, I started with a sketch for this one. I do that especially for like my gender bent cosplays so I can figure out like what I'm gonna adapt, what I'm gonna change. And then especially for this one, I was able to map out where the different like colors were, the different sections and got a way better understanding of how it went together had I not done the sketch. Anyway, in that sketch, I was able to try out like different colors, if I want shorts, if I wanted like long tights. Um, anyway, I landed on what I ended up using and it was really just like shorts and a top from Amazon. And like, I really didn't modify anything. It was just like spandex shorts. And um, okay, this is hilarious. <laughs> this is what's left of my top. Like, I'm not even gonna put the links to this stuff in the description because, oh my lord, what is this? I was wearing it just for like one whole weekend at a con and like, I didn't notice what was happening until I was like talking to somebody and like a piece of just like spandex fell out from under my coat. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. So I need to do something about this before I shoot this cosplay in like two weeks. But I also just got this basic belt in place of his like weight belt. <laughs> and I just bought what I think looks the closest thing like actual wrestling shoes. And they're just like knee high Converse that were like 30 bucks on Amazon. Um, and I was really extra and added logos to them. Um, I'll show it a little bit more when I talk about some other things, but I used my Cricut for the logos and I just had a lot of heat transfer vinyl. And I was like, why not? Let's be extra about it. Finally, for underneath, I like made fake knee pads, even though this one is totally squished. <laughs> but I basically just made like tubes of stretch spandex, just use like a zigzag stitch on them. And then on the inside to make it look like a knee pad, it's just some EVA foam that I like glued inside. And then those are my fake knee pads. Okay, before I get into the actual coat, uh, the last other most important part is <laughs> tattoos. So like these exist on like the WWE website now, so you don't even have to like go through what I did. <laughs> But that was before that. And I just bought like tattoo paper off Amazon, which is gonna be linked. And then I just kind of like, I drew, I redrew them in Illustrator just because I needed to use them for my Cricut anyway. There's that one. <laughs> I don't own a printer, unfortunately, so I went to FedEx to print these in the self-service area, which was just kind of like funny. Didn't want anyone to ask what I was doing <laughs> if I needed help. But yeah, it turned out I just printed like a ton on a sheet in case some smudge, and then I cut them out. Um, these aren't the neatly cut ones. I eventually cut them like really close to the design and then wore them, and it was mostly great. I had an allergic reaction of some sort to these. It wasn't like full-blown breakout in hives. Um, so just forewarning there. I think it's because this isn't like a proper tattoo and like it's almost like a sticker and I wore it for two full days of a convention and I think it was just like sweat stuck under there on my neck and yeah, I had that shape on my neck for like a good week afterwards. So just be careful. Anyway, so getting into the actual jacket now, um, the base for this was actually a like long red trench coat I got off of Amazon. I just like weighed my options if I wanted to like make it from scratch or not like the red part and I realized like with the time and the cost of material and I would wanted to make sure I had like a really solid base for this thing I just went ahead and bought a jacket which is linked below it looks nothing like it does anymore but yeah it's a great starting point um if you're looking for like any other sort of jacket and any other color I think the most important thing is to look for like the length and then also like the general shape of the collar Keeping in mind, you'll be cutting this whole 
part open anyway. <laughs> but yeah, once I had that jacket, the first thing I did was cut off like all the extra details on it. There were like flaps and like belt loops and stuff and I just got rid of those. And then I just used a piece of chalk and started to kind of like roughly mark out where I knew I was gonna need to cut it to get like these shapes going. So I just marked it first and then I cut it. I also cut like a slit in the back too, so. And then, yeah, once I cut that, I didn't actually like hem it or anything. I just did like a straight stitch on the edges that I cut. Um, I just knew there was gonna be so much stuff going on here that I didn't think it was worth it to hem it. Uh, it's frayed a little bit, but it's not that bad. So then after that was done, I moved on to adding all these like blue panels onto the jacket. Um, I was able to get some actual real genuine wool in navy on clearance, which is crazy. I was planning on getting just like felt and I think that would have worked just fine. But yeah, I was like, okay, this is great. But I had to make some pattern pieces for those because I just stitched that right on top of the jacket. So what I did was I just like laid the jacket flat on the floor and I took some tape and just kind of use that to mark out the sections that the blue was going to be in. So I basically made like flat pattern pieces using the tape. Then I just transferred those patterns onto the blue wool. Then I just cut it out and just stitched it right onto the jacket. I didn't even hem it or anything because I knew it was going to be covered up by like all this glitter stuff like none of this blue was hemmed underneath here at all actually i lied one part was hemmed and it's literally just right here this is the only part that wasn't covered up but yeah it wasn't too bad honestly to do the blue on the sleeves i did actually have to cut the sleeve apart and sewed the blue into it i didn't just like sew it on top of it otherwise i would have sewed up the sleeve i just cut out the spot where the blue was gonna go and then i used like the red part that i cut out of it for the pattern and then just sewed it back up with the blue and then like obviously my edges got covered up by this white anyway. And then my favorite part of this whole cosplay, I love these little butt flaps. <laughs> but yeah, I did these next. I just pretty much traced out a pattern for the two flaps and I just cut two, sandwiched it together, stitched it and then turned them right side out. And then I was just hand stitched the little butt flaps right on here. And once again, like there's a raw edge under here, but you can't see it, so it's totally fine. Now, the taxing and most time-consuming part of this was adding all these details onto it. I bought for all these details all over it these two rolls of this like blue and gold glitter ribbon. I actually didn't even go through, um, despite using so many yards of this, I didn't finish off these rolls. And then I had two different widths of white ribbon as well that were just like a buck. And of course I can't find it right now, but I also got Heat and Bond, which comes on these little like rolls like this. I got them in the same exact sizes as those ribbons. This is all linked below though, so you can see the sizes and everything that I used too. So basically the process was I would take one of my glitter ribbons and I would measure it out on a section and then cut it. And then I would measure out a strip of heat and bond the same and cut that to match it. And then I would take my iron, iron on the heat and bond on the wrong side of the glitter ribbon. And then I would iron the whole thing onto the jacket. So it was a ton of ironing. And I'm not gonna lie, it took forever. And like, I did this for hours at a time and like, repeated like wrist motions where you're applying pressure like that is like not great for your wrist and i already have some wrist issues and i actually gave myself tendonitis working on this which is like kind of embarrassing but just like whoa <laughs> basically i just followed my sketch to figure out like which color went where what overlapped over what and having that sketch was like a really big tool and i was staring at reference photos like the entire time get the like smaller pieces this was done with the same technique but once i got the heat and bond attached to the back of the glitter i cut strips like long thin strips of it that i then measured out and put on here so this is still the same ribbon i just cut it a lot thinner and at this point, once I had like all the blue done, all this gold and silver or whatever, call it blue, <laughs> white, <laughs> whatever, once that was all done, then I think I jumped to working on this back decal because it's just so cool. Like I mentioned, I had drew this whole thing out in Illustrator and layers. That way I could break it apart to use on my Cricut which was the first time I did something like this with my Cricut and it turned out pretty awesome. But yeah, rather than doing it directly to the jacket, this is a white piece of felt that I used my Cricut to trace the shape out on. 
and then I cut that shape out and then I used black heat transfer vinyl, uh, red glitter heat transfer vinyl, and blue glitter heat, <laughs> heat transfer vinyl. <laughs> And then I was able to make this whole thing together. And then I just hot glued it right on here. I don't know. I could have hand stitched it, but it's just easier. <laughs> and then at that point, I think I started working on the shoulder armor. It's looking like a little beat up after being in my garment bag, but it's fine. So I just bought a few packs of EVA foam scale strips. So they come on like these strips already. And then I was able to just kind of like cut the pieces up, glue them together until I had like this shoulder shape. Um, when I glued it together, this entire, it's not all glued together in one. That way I could bend it and like I heat formed it to the shoulder a little bit. And then I just used some plaid FX gold acrylic paint on it. And then I just uh, hot glued that on as well. Uh, to be honest, it's not the most like shiny thing. I think it still looks cool, but someday I might want to replace it with something else, but it was pretty cheap and I think it works. Once I had all of that done, I started finishing things up. So that's when I added snaps to the front of the jacket, which uh, just seemed like the easiest, but also that's what the real one has too. So I just hand sewed some snaps on and then I had to hand sew on, um, I think it was 108 buttons, if I remember right. This thing has buttons all up and down both sleeves and the panels in the front. <laughs> I just went online and started searching for like bulk gold shank buttons. And these are a little bit smaller than they could be. And I think his have like a funky design on them. But I was able to get like packs of like 40 on Etsy for really cheap. Um, so I recommend looking on Etsy. The ones I use aren't available anymore, but Etsy, eBay, just like bulk shank buttons. You'll need like over a hundred of them. <laughs> yeah, I just hand sewed them on. Um, on the inside, you could kind of see the stitching from them, but it really doesn't bother me that much. I just kind of went like, I think one section a day. So like I did one part of this or like one sleeve one day. And then I just like got into a rhythm because shank buttons are really like not that hard to sew. So once you get in a rhythm, it's like not bad at all. I am proud to say that um, I did not lose a single button anytime I've worn this. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> and then after that, the last part was adding these gold gems in between these like strips of ribbon. You can see that I'm missing like quite a few. It's not so bad here, but down here, there's like hardly any left. <laughs> like, look at this, they're all gone. <laughs> these are the gems that I used and they're literal gem stickers. So I don't totally recommend it. Um, I was able to get it done really quick, but if I were to fix this up or change anything, I would get like hot fix gems or use actual proper glue because these don't stay, especially not to like wool. But for now, it went by quickly and I'm able to just kind of like pop some on now and then when I need to. And that's pretty much it. My jacket is still missing some details. Like I know on the real one, there's like these gold gems are actually on all these gold strips, but... With the type of gems I used, these were never gonna stick to it. And I just like was not ready to commit to that. Like it's already so shiny as it is, it's okay. And then on the real one, I know there's some like extra white trim that goes like on the sleeves and like next to the other white pieces. I was going to do it and what I bought was like, I bought some puff paint thinking I could do that design on it, but I just kind of got like really nervous about it. I'm like, if I mess this up now with puff paint after I did everything else, there's no way. So I just kind of skipped it, but honestly, it gets the full effect without it. So yeah, that's it for now. I'm actually currently, like I mentioned, I'm working on a Charlotte Flair cosplay right now. So that'll be something cool to look out for. And I'm really excited because a lot of stuff I learned to do on this, um, I get to apply to that, like the back decals, some of the gems and stuff. So I'm super excited for that. Anyway, I hope this video could help somebody out, give people ideas, even like some other ideas that you could apply to other cosplays. Cause really there's a lot of techniques going on here and I'm happy to answer any questions about it. Um, I can't make you your own jacket, but I would love to like answer specific questions you might have. And be sure to check me out on my other social medias. I'm Ann Cosplay on Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and obviously here on YouTube. I'll see you next time.